Hey, Pastor Brett here, and I know a lot of pastors, especially of churches that don't have a lot of video background, are scrambling this week to try to figure out how they are going to pull off this weekend virtual worship. So um, I thought I'd make a little video just with some quick pointers about uh, how to really make your video look better, how to do this. You can do this. We are using Facebook Live to uh, broadcast our worship service, and we're working on a couple other options as well to add to that. But this past Sunday we did it, and it went well. I'm by no means an expert. I have been self-producing devotional videos for about two years now. I have a very good friend who is a executive producer, producer of a nationally syndicated, syndicated television program. It's on here in Jacksonville. It's on uh, all over the country. So uh, he's been very gracious to offer me some free coaching over the last year or so to help uh, take my, my uh, devotional videos to another level. And uh, so a lot of these insights uh, were from him. So anyway, let's uh, look at what we got here. Okay, so we have just transformed our platform area up here at the front of our worship center. Usually there's, there's chairs uh, right along here as well, uh, at least one more chair in the front aisle. Um, but what we've done, this, this is nothing what it looks like on Sunday morning. In fact, on Sunday morning, all that is there is a round table in the middle. But we have turned it into a production studio. All right, let's walk through some of the um, important pointers. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the obvious because of this set. And that is this, framing. Number one, let's talk about framing. It is vital that you frame the image well. One of the mistakes I'm seeing that churches that are trying to make the transition to, um, make the transition to virtual worship is that they are using, if, if they previously were on Facebook Live, they just kept the camera in the same place. Now, we have our, we only have one camera right now. We're going to, we've been studying how to transition to three camera views for Facebook Live, but right now we just have one. And we typically set it where I'm standing right now. And, and uh, this is the image. So it, it's, I'll be preaching, standing there and facing that direction on Sunday mornings. And that's the angle people see on Facebook. And you see my whole body. You don't see my face up close very much, but, um, and you see most of the worship team members as well. And you, we have the cross also in there. And you see part of the congregation sitting over on what, when I'm preaching is on my direct right. So it's a, we believe it's a nice image for uh, people watching on Facebook Live. But it, I think it would be a mistake for us to just keep doing that. Number one, we're going to be empty over there. Uh, number two, we're, we're talking about a, a whole new ball game here in terms of your audience is all now remote and you want to make this feel as good and personal to them as possible. So we had the phone set up on a tripod. I should have brought a tripod with me. Mine's like I said at home. We had a phone set up on a tripod right here. Here were the three legs of the tripod. One, two, we taped there and three. This was for our worship leader. She was so much shorter than I am and we framed the picture, we framed the, the image for me. We framed it for my height. So we, we had to put her up on something taller so to help her. And then I just gently pushed it away when I stepped up. We taped where I'm standing. Here's my normal table I use to preach from. And literally, I would say what? Two feet away was the phone on a tripod, just two feet away. So that's very close it's going to seem really strange to you if you're doing this for the first time but um that gets you to where you're framed well let me let me flip the camera around and i'll show you about what i'm talking about all right so um i'm going to set the phone down over here against these bibles and it's pretty close to the distance it's just a tad closer so i'll just step back and i've got this this microphone cord. So I'm, I'm about the length of my cord here. So now my hand's stretching out. Um, so, you know, we're, we're talking probably about five feet away, a camera, actually maybe a little bit closer than that. Now, of course, in the, when we record, it's on a tripod, so it's sitting up here, okay? There's no way for me to right now, well, actually I can, I think. I'll move this over and set this up like this. 
I apologize for limited resources and things with me, but I'm just trying to get this video made really quickly. That's about the distance. Now, we had the camera obviously a little bit higher and there's nothing for me to put it on because I don't have the tripod here. It's a, I forgot it left at the house this morning, but let me scroll, go down a little bit. So there you go. You see what that looks like? I'll just, I'll just squat a little bit. You see how, as if I were sitting, and you could sit as well, but you see how I'm framed now? Um, our camera was a little bit more to this way, but um, we've got the cross behind me. We've got um, over here, uh, this, and that's another factor. This is a monitor, and we the monitor is currently correct. You see the light reflecting off of it? This is the type of things you have to have. You gotta think through. Um, the monitor is reflecting these lights. Now, when it's on, when the when the camera is actually on the tripod where it's supposed to be, we've got it to where you don't have that reflection. So that works out well. But you wanna be really close. And of course, when I'm standing, I'm from here up, but I'm framed well to where my head's just a little bit above the top, or a little bit, excuse me, below the top. You don't wanna be way down here where you got all this, and you don't wanna be up here where you're chopped off. You wanna just be just a little bit, just a little bit, and, and frame it well like that. So. Framing is very important and it's so much closer than you ever imagined when you, when you think about this. It seems like people are right up in your face, but that's okay because it's gonna, go, it's gonna um, go through the screen to the person who's watching and it'll, it'll really look good for them. All right, that's framing. Let's talk about number two. Number two is most important and it's also the most complicated and can be the most difficult. It's lighting, lighting. When you're making a video, lighting is most important, and this is what my friend Rodney really helped me with, is the lighting situation. So, um, right now, I'm hot on this side of my face, not literally physically hot. I'm meaning that you see how I, it's kind of almost like washed out, and, and that's, that's what we call hot, and we wanna eliminate hot spots um, if I were to lean forward. I made a, a Facebook Live video last night for our church where they could come on. We had some devotional time on Wednesday night and I could not get the lighting right. I did it from my garage <laughs> and I was, I was hot and I just couldn't get the lighting right. So I was very frustrated, but you wanna work on the lighting. So right now I'm too hot. And part of the reason is, is because I've got these spotlights on. So um, let me show you now the difference. I'm gonna uh, take a break here for just a second. I'm gonna turn off our spotlights to the stage. I'm just gonna go with these two pro strobe lights portable strobe lights that we have. All right, see the difference? That's not too bad really, and, and I actually need to turn off a few more lights, and uh, I also would have a, a screen light in front of me from a monitor that's in front of me that shows my image so I can see, and I can actually watch reactions and comments. Uh, we hook that to our, our phone that's, that's running the Facebook Live to where I can actually watch who's logging on, uh, and, et cetera. Um, and then behind me, I can also see right now uh, this screen. But notice the lighting is a lot better than when I had all, all the uh, spotlights on. So you'll need to tone down probably your lighting that you typically have on Sunday morning if you have uh, spotlights. Now, it could be your church is very well lit and naturally lit, maybe with windows or, or maybe your facility um, has a lot of ceiling lighting and it's all very natural and, and your lighting may be really good naturally so so that's great here's the thing you want to avoid shadows on your face on either side you want to avoid being too white now it's still like i feel like i'm a little hot here on this one but um my guys that helped me from the weekend aren't here with me so they're the ones that help me with the lighting and it's also helpful if you've got guys who know this stuff you've got a portrait studio photographer in your church call him up have him come up or her come up uh and and help you with the lighting because that's their specialty. They know their stuff really well. In fact, I've got a lot of good counsel from, from a retired, um, a good friend of ours that is a, a retired portrait studio photographer. Another thing I would add about lighting is if you decide you want, if you get crazy, say, hey, you know what? I think it'd be great for us to uh, produce our worship service outside. You know, go out for that natural lighting. We're doing something different right now. We're in this, uh, if, if that's you, be very careful, uh, especially here in the Sunshine State of Florida. 
the sun is not your friend when it comes to lighting outdoors as a whole. It can do really well in the morning hours, can do really well at dusk. So dawn and dusk, you can get some incredible uh, opportunities for lighting for video, but typically in the middle of the day, if it's a sunny day in Florida, it is not your friend. It's very hard to work with. It creates shadows. Um, you don't you don't want to be behind the sun. Uh, you don't, I mean, excuse me, you don't want the sun behind you when you're making video. You don't want the sun directly in front of you, but on the other hand, you don't really want it creating shadows across your face from an angle. So it's very difficult to find a good time of day if you're standing out in the sun. Now, one of the good things you can do is maybe go into a, a more wooded area where it shields you from the sun. Uh, but your best friend when it comes to uh, filming outside is a over, an overcast day. An overcast day is a videographer's favorite conditions because it's very evenly lighted everywhere. If you like this video, please share it and also subscribe. Thanks.